What's up guys? So today I want to talk about the different techniques and methods I use to find winning products, products that sell, um, products that won't just sell once, whoops, um, but they will sell multiple times um, over and over again. And so this is something I've been doing for quite a while. So I just want to first go through a beginner way. You can, if you're starting out, this might be a bit complicated. So I want to go through a beginner way that you can find good products, products that will sell, and um, an advanced way for those who've been doing it for a while, or just want to change things up, or maybe they're having some trouble with their sales. And so this is what I've been doing. But before I go into that, I just want to explain the general way that I used to do before I found these ways, and which have worked pretty well. Um, so originally when I first started, I was just listing as many products as I can. And so I was listing every single day. I was listing, when I started off manually, I was listing about 20 products a day. And then when I got a listing software, I started listing up to uh, up towards a hundred products a day, I believe. And so I wasn't doing any competitive research when I started. So I wasn't checking what are other sellers selling and why are those products selling so well if they do sell? And so I was just kind of just going into it blindly. I was just listen, listen, listen for volume and volume, volume, just because the reason in my head, and I think a lot of it in other people, other sellers' head, is that if you list 100 products and one of them sells, you might as well list 1,000 products and then 10 of those will sell, right? So it's just a process of odds. Um, so the more you have, the more chance you have making a sale. And while that's true, that's not the best way I think to go about it. And so this way, rather than focus on volume from my first store where I had thousands and thousands and thousands listed to my second store, which I explained in a previous video, a store that I brought to 10K a month within three months, um, where I only have, I think, a couple of hundred listings. And so, and a lot of those I'm just playing around with. And so the first method I wanna go through um, is manually searching for competitors and products that sell well. So I'm gonna go with the frying pan example that I always go with every single time. Okay. And let's get straight into this. And so the first thing we're gonna do, we can, we can see straight away that this is 44 plus sold. So we know these are selling well, um, but this is from Hong Kong. So I don't really wanna go off this. Um, let's see, let me just switch over to eBay.co.uk since I'm based here right now. Well, but this will apply to wherever you are. If you're in the US, I still I sell in the US as well. Um, and if you sell in France, Germany, or any other European country, this will work just as well, same thing. Um, okay, so here we go. So I'm just gonna type in frying pan. And let the load, if that loads. Jesus, why? Okay. And so the first thing we wanna do is that we can see straight away that these say, this is 278 sold, 160 sold, 278 sold. So we know that people are buying these products so that these are successful products. This seller has sold 278. This is a sponsored post as well. Something I'll cover in a later video to increase sales. Um, and so we can see that these are selling pretty well but 2,441 sold, but most likely this person has bought this in bulk or they're getting directly from a manufacturer. But what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go down to this left-hand side here and filter the results to sold listings. So not com just completed listings, but we wanna see the listings that have finished and have sold. And now, so the first thing we're gonna see, we can see which one's sold. We wanna look for repeat listings. Okay, so straight away already, we can see, even though this is not the same size pan, I can see just from the title that this person is the same seller, straight away. They're using the same keywords, they've just taken out the different size of the pan. So let's keep going down. So we don't wanna use, so what we're gonna do is, well, we're gonna sort by buy it now, because we're not gonna worry about 
auction because we don't do that. All our products are going to be brand new. And we're also going to search for new. So once you have those filters in place, then we can start going through to see what is selling. Okay, so like I said before, we can see these two have sold from the same competitor. Let's keep going down, Let's see what else is selling. Okay, okay. Okay, so there's a lot of different pans here, obviously. Okay, so there's tons of different pans. What we're gonna focus on, that's kind of a, probably a broad same just about frying pan. We probably wanna make that more specific non street frying pan, a frying pan with lid or TFL frying pan or something like that to make that a bit more specific. But for now, we're gonna click on this just because we saw this has sold and another, another one of his listings has sold well as well. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to look at this buyer. So this is a big buyer. This is a big seller. Sorry, hundred twenty six thousand six hundred and twenty seven. Wow. No wait, one million two hundred sixty thousand six hundred twenty. So this is a massive, massive seller with that many feedback. And so what we're going to do now is that we can see that this is selling well. So what we want to do is one of two things. First, we want to see if we can find this and undercut the product. Or, and the second thing, if we can't undercut under the product, what we want to do is we're going to do something called snob optimization. And what that means is that we are going to take the, these keywords and we're going to add additional keywords in. So, for example, I would probably write something like 28 centimeter nonstick ecolution, ecolution frying pan. I would put something like kitchen. I would put new. I would put many different things. And so one way we can find correct keywords is go to titlebuilder.com. And so this is something I'm gonna cover fully in another video, different optimization techniques I do, but just to go really quickly into it. So we wanna go to titlebuilder.com. I'm gonna select title builder right here. If it loads. And so the aim of Title Builder is that it will, you can put in a word, for example, frying pan, just like we searched, put those keywords in. And what it's going to do is it's going to search eBay for all the most relevant keywords and the most popular keywords people search. So straight away we can see cookware, set. And I'll search frying, copper, nonstick, steel, nonstick, three, five skillet, and we see ceramic, inch, new. And so we don't want to put all these in, obviously. We want to put the ones that correctly describe the items because we don't want someone sending it back and say, look, you said it was copper and it's not copper. But we want to take these ones, the most relevant keywords, and uh, put those in. So fry, skillet, nonstick, steel. And so what we would do, we would take this product and we would we would take this title and add in those keywords. And what that will do is that when we will have a greater visibility for our listing, meaning when people search with different keywords, we can be on that listing. Because if someone searches, I don't know, um, let's see, steel cookware, this is not gonna show up because they don't have these keywords unless that's something in the description, they don't have these keywords and we are gonna show for that listing. So that's one thing I wanna go, this is kind of for beginners. Um, even you can do it right into intermediate or advanced. Um, this is a free way to do it. And so this just takes a couple of minutes in the morning, maybe 10, 15 minutes spent in the morning just to do some product research because that will make all the difference I can promise you to your sales. Do some product research, see what's selling well. And try, if you when you find a product that you see that's selling well, that's got a few sales, you want to either see go on Amazon, go on a different retailer, 
See if you can undercut that product. And if you can't, at least take this title, make the title better, put more keywords in there, make it more relevant so that your listing will show and rank high on the search results. You, we can take this even one step further. We can click on this guy, this seller, and we can see his listings of what's selling well. So what we can do now is another technique which is called sniping, which means we can take people's products that are selling well and that we can undercut them. And so we can find this person has enormous amount, say like 80, 813,925. So we can go on their items, items for sale, and we can do the exact same thing again. We can filter for sold items and look through their items and see what's sold well for them. And so you can do this literally with any listing, any seller. You can filter for sold results and you can see what's selling well. And it stands to reason, if these are selling well, why not with you? Why not, especially if you're optimizing the title and getting more keywords in your titles, there's no reason that yours should be selling well. And so straight away, we can see this guy selling Gorilla Glue and he's selling that. And so these are all just from today, 28th. And we can see that these are selling well. Keep going down. So we can, we can take these, we can look every single one of these up on Amazon and we can see if we can undercut them or at least match them and add more keywords. Cause I can see just looking at his right now, he doesn't put too many keywords. He probably takes this straight title, this title straight from Amazon and copies and pastes it in because he's probably listing in bulk. He's probably getting all the URLs, put in a software and listing maybe a thousand a day or something like that. You can list a thousand all at once. Um, and so he's just going for volume as opposed to optimization. And so this is one way of going through to find products that actually sell, not products that you're just shooting in the dark with, you're just listing anything, but you know that these products are actually gonna sell. And the second way I wanna go through quickly is using software. And so this is something that disclaimer you will you do have to pay for and so i wouldn't advise it if you're brand new i wouldn't advise it i would just go with the free method you don't want to increase your overhead straight away but if you're making money and you want to find a way to increase your sales then definitely i would invest in a software this is zick analytics i'll have the uh, my url refer url below um, if you want to do that disclaimer i do get a little commission from it but i will post it there anyway um, i don't want to just tell people to go click my URL. I, I like to be transparent in everything I do. Um, and so this is a software where we can do a lot of product research, we can do competitor research, but the thing I'm gonna go with right now is product research. And so I'm gonna go and search for these frying pans. Okay, so I'm searching the United Kingdom. The good thing about this is you can search over the world, all over the world on all the different markets. And so I think I'll make a video later showing everything I use with SIG analytics, but that's for another time because that'd be a very long video. Um, but this has been an absolute game changer for me anyway. Um, and so I'm gonna search for frying pan. And I'm not gonna search minimum price, brand new, fixed price, United Kingdom. Um, sale day range within the last 30 days. And so I'm gonna click six selection. Oh, I haven't selected any products because I haven't searched for it yet. My bad, my face was covering it. Okay, so here we go. So we can see what's selling. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tick this box right here, which is select these top 100 items. And now I'm gonna click this button, Zik Selection. So what that's gonna do is that it's gonna take all the items there and it's gonna compile it for me. So I can take a better look at who's selling it and, and how much times it's sold. And this is good for a number of reasons. Not only can we see how many times these things have sold, but we can also find the seller. And then, like we did last time, go into his page and find what's sold multiple times. And the nice thing about Zik is that it's, a lot more simpler and it'll show you directly what's the top products that are selling, how many have sold, and what is the price that they're selling with. And then it'll even show you the link if they got it from Amazon. So you can look directly on there. So, and the good thing is that we can tell on top of this if this is a good product to sell. Why? Sell-through rate. 
successful listings. Now this is key. If you look at this, 99% of listings have been successful for sales, which is absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. 90, can you imagine 99% of listings have sold? And the sell through rate is 2,860%, which is absolutely crazy. And so it'll give us the average product price, give how much has been made from these. Uh, from these. Um, and so let's go straight into this. And this is why I love Zik, because straight away we can see that this, this pan right here has sold 165 times for this much. And let's keep going down. We can see this is a sell seller. If I wanted to, I could click on to his store and see what he's been selling. And so it shows me if these are bigger guys or not, depending on like this person has 170,000 feedback. This person only has 37,000, which is still a lot. And so this one right here, we can see that this divider pan, I've seen these all over Facebook, um, has sold 83 times. And so this, actually, if I click this, it should find it on Amazon. It doesn't work all the time. Um, so let's give it a go and see what it shows up on Amazon as. Okay, so I actually found this, but it didn't find the same one. Um, it found, a, I guess, a way more expensive one. But that's just an example. I don't know, it didn't find it that time. Um, but if you keep going through this, we can see, look, this is sold 83 times, 80 times, 74 times. And so we know these things are selling. We know what we can search to find this pan. We, I copy and paste straight into Amazon and have a look at how much this is. Because of the volume of sales, I'm guessing he's getting it for a similar price and making money off the back end through cashback and things like that. But now that we know this is selling, we can see that look at his title, t -File Institution Stainless Steel in Induction Frying Pan. Those are only the only keywords in that title. We can add so many keywords, kitchen, cookware, new, brand new, gift, many things like that and put that into the title. Luxury, people like to see words like luxury, brand new, premium, words like that market the product a lot better. So we can we can do definitely do a better job of marketing this product. Not saying we're gonna get 165 sales like him, but we can definitely start getting some sales if we take this product and we market it better. And so, yeah, and so those are the two things I wanted you guys to take away from this video to help you. I know the, probably one of the, the most hardest things starting off is finding products that sell. And it can even be, even if you're an experienced seller, I know a lot of people have dipped into their sales recently, so have I, to increase your sales. These things have changed it completely. I think I went from selling something like, so on my second store went from selling, I think 2,000 to 10,000. And I also cut my listings probably by a third. So that shows you the power of product research and how how important, I can't stress how important product research is. You, like any business, no company is not gonna, is just gonna take a product and throw it on the market. They're gonna do all sorts of research, see what's selling, well, why is it selling, the demographic, everything like that. And this is no different. We wanna do product research. We wanna see what's selling well, how it's selling, how much we're selling, and how can we sell it better than them. And so I hope this has helped you guys. Um, I think in the next video, I'm gonna go through different optimization tactics so you can get your products to rank higher, get better visibility. Um, let me know in the, uh, in the comments below if there's any videos in particular you'd like to see. Um, I, I am a new um, YouTuber, so if you could go ahead and uh, subscribe to me and give this a like, that'd mean a lot. Um, if you found this useful, that is, if you found some value from this, I really uh, appreciate it. Um, I, I try to be a transparent um, guru. I don't wanna be one of these fake gurus and you're gonna make a bunch of money. I wanna be very transparent, very upfront with you guys. Um, and how to help you guys uh, make more money and make a living off this. Um, so I hope you guys like this and I will see you guys in the next video.